Hey, how's it going guys? This is John, and today we're taking a look at the 2018 Specialized Diverge. This video is just going to be an overview video, uh, taking a closer look at some of the features and details. This is not going to be a review video, I'll do one of those later on. I actually haven't had a chance to ride this particular bike outside yet, it's been about zero degrees here in Michigan. Um, but before buying the bike, I, I was able to do test rides at my shop uh, to make sure that I liked the bike, uh, but I haven't actually ridden this particular one. So, uh, like I said, this is just going to be kind of showing the bike, um, taking a closer look at some of the features and details, things you might be interested in, or little details that you can't really discern uh, if you're just checking out the Specialized website. So hopefully you find this informative, and uh, let's take a look. All right, so starting at the top, we have the Shimano 105 shifters. These are a mechanical shifter with a hydraulic brake, and they're mounted on the Specialized hover bar. Uh, I really like this bar a lot. It has a nice flat ergonomic surface up here, uh, short reach to the hoods, and then also a pretty shallow drop. And on this size 56, uh, this is a 42 centimeter wide bar. The one thing that can be a little bit tricky with this bar is because you have the rise right here, it doesn't give you a lot of area that's flat where you can mount any uh, bar mounted accessories. So, um, you know, like this GPS mount is pretty thin, so it can use this area, but then you have this whole area here where it's pretty hard to mount anything. Uh, on this side, I have my Knight Rider Lumina Light. I just have it flipped upside down so it doesn't get in the way. There's a 100 millimeter stem, and with this uh, Future Shock setup, one thing that I wasn't sure about was, was if this bike takes a standard stem or not, but it does, so you can use any stem that you like. And then there's a spacer that's mounted inside the stem that clamps onto the top of the future shock uh, to adapt it because the, the future shock is a bit smaller. The top cap up here is non-functional because the headset adjustments are done. Uh, there are two Allen bolts in here. There's a two millimeter and a two and a half millimeter that are used to preload the headset. And then in this hole right here is the, the clamp that actually mounts um, to the steer tube of the fork, which only comes up to about here, and then the rest of the distance up here is the future shock. The future shock comes with three springs. The medium spring is the one that's installed, so there's a soft spring and a firm spring. Um, I'll talk more about the, the ride of the future shock when I do the review video, but uh, from the test rides that I've done, I really like it. I find that the effect is noticeable, uh, but you don't feel any suspension bobbing or anything like that you uh, like you would with a uh, conventional suspension fork. And another benefit of the future shock is that the the steer tube of the fork only comes up to here and then your stack height which is adjustable by changing this plate the bottom plate down here as well as the uh, spacers that you have stacked you can adjust your stack height without ever cutting the fork because all of that is just adjusted with the, the future shock and where you mount it. So um, if you wanted to drop the stem down, you can do that by taking the spacers out, putting on the low, lower profile cap. Um, and then if you ever wanted to bring it back up for whatever reason, it's not like on a normal bike where you have to cut the steer tube or you have to stack spacers on top. You can just raise that back up, put these, put the taller base plate on, put more spacers on there and uh, get the stem higher up. So you can make all those adjustments without doing any permanent modifications to the steer tube. Coming down to the wheels, uh, this is the, these are the like in-house wheels for Specialized, they're the Axis Elite. When I emailed Specialized to ask about the weight, um, they said that they're 1,638 grams for the set, which is actually really good for a stock wheel set. Uh, looking at the front, it's kind of an interesting design. It's got uh, radially laced wheels or radially laced spokes on the non brake side, and then a crossed spoke pattern on the brake side to handle the torque of the brakes. Uses a through axle and the new flat mount standard for the brakes. All of the cables are internally routed, so you can see where the hydraulic line comes out from the inside of the fork. And this comes stock with the Trigger 38mm tires. Um, they're tubeless ready. 
and I think there's 60 TPI. Here's a look at the front of the bike. And you can see where the brake line enters the fork here. There's a single mount on the sides of the fork. Uh, there's another bolt up here and another threaded bolt or a threaded hole down here. Uh, so you can use all of that for fender mounting. Here's a closer look at the frame. They've got the drop seat stays for a little bit more compliance. A uh, standard seat post clamp that's external. This model comes with the CGR seat post, which not all the models come with, uh, but it's a feature that I really like. It just adds a little bit more compliance because um, you can get some flex. This acts like a leaf spring and then you have an elastomer in the middle. And it comes with the Phenom Comp Saddle. On the frame, uh, you have two sets of water bottle mounts that are inside the main triangle, and then a third set that's mounted on the bottom of the down tube. And if you notice, there are actually three bolts. Uh, the top two, or I mean, you could use either set, but um, Normally you'd use the top two for your water bottle mount, and then these two bottom bolts are used if you want to mount the uh, SWAT box, which is a little storage box that you can get from Specialized. Up here you can see the cable mount. I'm sorry, the uh, cable entry. And you've got the same thing on the other side. Oh, one thing I found um, after I got this bike uh, from the factory on the down tube and then a few other spots on the frame, they actually have clear um, protection tape. So it'll protect the, the paint from rocks and anything like that that the tire kicks up. They also have it mounted on the sides of the uh, chain stays on both sides. So if your heel were to hit the frame, it protects it. The crank set on this is the Praxis Alba. Um, my previous bike, I had the current generation 105 crank set. It, it was a really good crank set, and like anything Shimano, it shifted really well. Uh, like I said, I haven't been able to ride this much. Um, on the test rides, I was shifting through the gears. It felt great. And then when I had it on the repair stand uh, after I took delivery of this bike, I found that the chain rings shift really well. Um, so I'm happy with this crank set so far, but I'll give you my impressions on this once I'm able to put some miles on this bike. The bike just comes with plastic flat pedals, um, but I have the XT mountain bike pedals on here. And up front we have um, the 105 front derailleur, and this seems to be a new design. This, If you look up here, you can see the way the the cable comes around. It also doesn't have the arm, the long arm from the last generation um, that where the derailleur cable mounted to. So this is it's a better design in terms of leverage. It's much easier to shift, um, a little bit more compact in design, and then it keeps the cable from um, kind of poking out into weird directions. So overall, it's an improvement on the 105 derailleur. And then. Specialized has a, you can see this metal bar right here, and this is basically just a chain protector, um, mounts on the brazon, and it just prevents the chain from dropping down and uh, tearing up the frame. Going to the chain stays, uh, there's a, a rubber protector, protects the chain stay. We've got the 105 rear derailleur. You can see the, the derailleur hanger is actually mounted on the inside of the frame rather than coming off on the outside like you typically see. And you can see another uh, threaded hole for fenders. 
It's the same wheel in the back. It's the Axis Elite uh, cross spoke pattern on both sides, on the drive side and the brake side. And then the same tire. This is the Trigger 38 millimeter. That's a 105 cassette and the KMC uh, KMC 11 speed chain. And again, on the back, you can see the flat mount brakes with the uh, the internal cable routing. All right, so that's a look at the 2018 Specialized Diverge Comp. Uh, I think I mentioned this before, but it's a size 56, weighs 21 pounds without pedals or lights. And uh, if there's anything that I left out or if you have any other questions or comments, feel free to post those below, and I'll try to get back to you. Thanks for watching.